This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Three prisoners in Kyunga escape and still at large in Western Province. Papua New Guineans encouraged to preserve and look after land. And Gorokalahanis defeat the Lay Snakes Tigers in Port Moresby, 19 points to 18. A very good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. Three suspects kept in police cell escaped and are still on the run in the Western Province. Provincial Police Commander for North Fly Command, Chief Inspector Owena Ofeke, says the police cell in Kyunga needs maintenance work for the effective policing. According to police inspector, the three suspects that escaped from the police cell are from Tari in Hela province. They were apprehended for smuggling 22 kilograms of marijuana bag into the western province on July 9th of this year. While detained and waiting formal court process, they managed to open the roof and escaped after spending seven days in the cell. They opened up the roof and they, they escaped. Uh, evading uh, justice to prevail and uh, for this uh, the, uh, from, from the police cell I, I cannot uh, uh, quit jumping to blaming my police officers on duty because the public safety is it's only maintained by uh, one or two uh, police officers 24-7 uh, uh, at a time they escape. Currently, the police cell in Kiunga can cater for only 40 inmates and cannot fit others due to limited space. Hence, the chief inspector, Feke, says maintenance work is needed at this time so that arrested suspects must not escape. The maintenance part of the cell at this time is a need for Kiunga police station. Uh, Tabubil is all right. Uh, Ningum is okay the cells. Uh, but for Kyunga alone, needed major maintenance. He added that effective policing in the North Fly Command and Western Province as a whole needed collective effort from the community leaders, the district including the Fly River Provincial Government to work together to maintain good order, peace and public safety. Inspector Afeke is also appealing to the people in North Fly District to help report any law and order problems faced in respective communities to police so that they can attend to it accordingly. Meanwhile, villagers were also urged to report if they cite the escapees and not to harbour them. Natasha Ovoy, National, MTV News. Meanwhile, police in North Fly Command are in great need of accommodation to cater for more officers. Currently, only 71 police officers are performing their duties within the district. Chief Inspector Owena Feke says law and order problems have increased. Therefore, more work needs to be done for effective policing. Accommodation here on ground, we can able to put our request so that we bring them in. And uh, that is where we build up the capacity for the policing here in, in the main uh, 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 town in North Fly District, Kiunga. Because the public safety, where 24 7 service we will provide. Currently, we only, uh, we don't, uh, we, we are incapacitated. There is uh, only one or two policemen who are manning uh, the public safety. So if we can build up this by building accommodation, we build up manpower. Four passengers were rescued when a dinghy with 11 occupants was struck by waves causing six passengers to fall overboard when they were travelling from Finchafen to Leh yesterday morning. Morabe Rural Police Commander Superintendent David Warup said four of the six passengers overboard were rescued. Warup strongly advised that travelling public to adhere to strong wind warnings and said a coordinated effort will be organised with the disaster office to look for the mission missing two passengers. 
Pope Francis has established 1st of September as the World Day of Prayer for the care of creation, encouraging the Catholic community and others around the world to pray for our common good. Based on that, Archbishop Emeritus of Rabal, Archdiocese Francis Penfilo, said natural resources is not a commodity but a gift from God and it must be protected. The damage done to the environment in different projects shows that there is no commitment to conservation and replenishment that is envisaged under the fourth national goal and directive principle. The manner in which foreign companies pressure local landowners to hastily enter into agreements without firstly consulting with their people or seeking independent legal advice shows that there is no respect for the Melanesian principles of participation. This was according to Emeritus Archbishop of Rabaul. I felt that it was necessary to renegotiate the agreement, to have a new agreement. The church is not against development and is not against a project, even the project that there is in West Pomio. But the church wants something that is fair, that is just for everybody, especially for the little ones, for the poor, the people in the villages, and like that. Catholic Bishop Conference General Secretary Father Jojo also says the environment that we live on reflects our spiritual belief. And when we create a desert by removing the trees or by uh, killing the sea, uh, by polluting the rivers, when you create death and desert around us, is because we have already created a desert inside us, uh, a spiritual desert. He stressed that people have lost the motivation and concerns that is supposed to guide them to protect the environment. We have to be always caring about uh, God, others, nature, and eventually ourselves. By caring about nature, we care about ourselves and the generations to come. If we abuse nature today, we'll pay a price. And those who come after us, innocent, will pay an even worse price. Estagane, National MTV News. The National Book Week ended on a high note on Friday with the launching of a new book in the 19-part series with My Future Careers. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. The National Book Week celebration started off on Tuesday, 22nd of August, with 50 of the students from Book Belong Pekinini visiting the National Museum and Art Gallery and later the Teodist Printing Office. Boat tours coincided with the launch and meeting of a professional role model in the book series. The children got to meet a doctor, a rugby player, a graphic artist and a lawyer with each of the book launching during the week. And Sophie Hemmen, when addressing the media on Tuesday, gave an overview of what the Book Belong Pekinini has planned for the National Book Week and book launching during the week. To celebrate Book Week, we have a very strong focus on when I grow up. Um, that's our book series that helps children think about their future. And how are they going to think about their future if they don't quite know what types of jobs are out there in Papua New Guinea? So we've created this series where we're very fortunate to work with our donor partners and give the children the opportunity to, to be with a role model for a day. The National Book Week ended on Friday with the book launching of When I Grow Up, I Want to Be a Doctor. The event included a launch read by role model Dr. Vincent Yakilia, a senior advisor held with Santos. Hammond said the children are involved in play-based activities and elaborated on that. So they sit and read the books, but they also create play-based learning activities. So they have... Um, at some library learning centers, they'll be setting up a supermarket or a shop. Others will create an airplane to be PNG Air. Others will create a doctor's surgery. So the children play their way to the learning. 
An additional six readers are currently in production and will be launched during the book week 2024. The reader will be used as part of Book Belong Pikinini's early childhood education program to motivate the children to think about their future career choices. Hemen also thanked the major supporter of my careers when I grew up book series. We have our very important partner, which is the Sir Brian Bell Foundation, who sponsors five library learning centers, our inclusive education program, but also this series of readers. So they provide us with financial support so we can print these and create these high quality books for the children of Papua New Guinea. They can see their own faces, they can read about themselves, and they can see the professions that are available to them in the future. All books published by Book Belong Pikinini can be purchased from Teodist or directly from Book Belong Pikinini's office or on their website. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The United Nations Population Fund has provided 14 solar lights to Lay Area Medical Store in Morabe Province to improve the security of the medical warehouse. The Lay AMS team managed to successfully set up the lights at the warehouse with two flat lights around the yard and the two security lights on the roof of the warehouse. The remaining lights will be set up inside the warehouse storage space. According to the acting assistant manager Luki Pokapon, it has been almost a decade since the lay AMS had proper working lights. Mr. Pokapon shared that it has been close to 10 years since they had proper lights in and around the warehouse and it has been a security risk for the team and the medicine supplies stored there. The area medical store in Lei, Morobe province is responsible for the medicine supply and distribution to almost 200 health facilities in Morobe province and for other catchment provinces, Eastern Highlands, Medeng, Manus and the Northern province. They now have four street solar lights. The two they have mounted on the roof provide light from the AMS onto the streets around the AMS ensuring that there is no room for any theft, helping the guards that monitor the area. UNFPA's work with Delay AMS is part of the organization's work in strengthening reproductive health commodity supply chains, ensuring that medicines and devices are available when and where they are needed in health facilities around the country. In addition to procuring reproductive health commodities, UNFP works in partnership with the National Department of Health to provide inventory management training for health facility staff responsible for managing stock levels of essential medicines to improve logistics between the area medical store and health facilities. Esther Gane, National MTV News. On Wednesday, the government of Palau and Papua New Guinea countersigned the bilateral air service agreement between the two countries. The signing took place in Palau and was signed by Minister for Transport and Civil Aviation Walter Schnobelt and Palau's Minister for Public Infrastructure and Industries Charles Obicheng. The air service ne negotiations was held in Manila, Philippines between the two governments in February this year, although discussions were held in 2018 when the two countries started discussions over the matter. In this agreement, flight routes under the Pacific Flights program that was awarded to Air New Guinea to service was approved by the two governments as seen in the bilateral air services are Port Moresby to Koro in Palau to Port Moresby, then to Brisbane and finally back to Port Moresby and vice versa. These routes will provide more air connectivity to the people of both countries to Brisbane via Port Moresby, thus providing connections to other destinations within the region. Minister Schnobelt is confident that this, through this partnership, air services arrangements by the two countries can achieve stronger relationships in other areas such as tourism and other business opportunities. BSP's financial literacy program continues in selected schools in the country in partnership with their community partner NRL club Brisbane Broncos. Students from St. Joseph Malagunen Primary School in Rabaul, East New Britain, 
where the recent recipients of the program that aims to help school children understand the basics of budgeting in order to make better financial, financial decisions. BSP Rabaul Brands Manager David Pillai and his team conducted the training for more than 50 grade 4 students last week, which resulted in 15 Sumatin accounts and 7 kids saving accounts opened. Mr. Pillai explained to the students that with growth comes added responsibilities of ensuring that BSP customers, especially in rural areas, are empowered and well informed in financial literacy. Financial literacy is an important part of BSP's contribution to the communities that they operate in. Mr. Pillai said their teams visit selected schools to run training conducted by trained financial literacy trainers and delivered through BSP branches across Papua New Guinea and the Pacific. They target schools, churches, organized community groups, businesses, and corporate organizations. Since 2014, they have reached more more than 160,000 students of which 1,100 students have participated through their community partnership with the Brisbane Broncos. Students from grades 4 and 10 are the targeted audience under the financial literacy program. Most schools will be visited in the coming months in NCD and East New Britain province. Esther Gane, National MTV News. In the effort to assist coffee farmers in the area, a 42-metre footbridge has been successfully completed in Omkolai Gumini district in the Simbu province. The government-funded project comes under the Coffee Industry Corporation's Coffee Access Road project with an investment of 529,000 kina. This project was carried out to assist farmers in Bokil and Polma, where there are more than 2,000 plus coffee farmers in the area with more hectares of coffee farms cultivated. The footbridge will officially be launched in September of this year. Amstrad Holdings, a pioneering internet service provider hailing from Papua New Guinea, has achieved a momentous victory at the Distinguished Bees Europe event held today in Lisbon, Portugal at Corinthia Hotel. The accolade celebrates Amstrad's visionary mission of connecting remote communities and driving social change. At the heart of this remarkable achievement stand is Vani K. Nades, the CEO of Amstrad Holdings. The unwavering commitment to the vision and person with Amstrad's resolute dedication to closing the digital divide and creating social change has catapulted to the forefront of international recognition. Upon receiving the award, Vanike Nades conveyed her gratitude with profound appreciation. She says this recognition on a global platform of such significance fills her with deep gratitude on behalf of the company and PNG. Vanike Nades and her team have scripted history as the first Papua New Guinean to claim this distinguished award. Her groundbreaking achievement serves as an embodiment of her pioneering spirit and her relentless determination to uplift her nation through digital empowerment and social inclusion. Estagane, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Tukai Sports Welcome to Trukai Sports. The National Football Stadium was filled to capacity today in Port Moresby as supporters of both teams, the Lace Next Tigers and the Goroka Lahanis, came in their numbers to support. From the get-go, the two teams showed great skills and prowess to getting the crowds excited. In a tough contest, though, it was the lay sides that scored two points in the first half to lead, but that changed after the Lahani scored two back-to-back -back tries to lead the first half. With 16 minutes to half-time, Lace Next Tigers equalised the score 
bringing the halftime scores to 8 all. In the second half, the game got even tougher as the Tigers scored another try to lead the match in the second half. But again, towards the full-time siren, the Gorukalahanis returned the favour only to equalise the scores 18 all at full-time. The match was given another 10 minutes, 5 minutes each way to test the skills of the two teams. Despite the strong contest, the Gorukalahanis proved to be the more dominant side. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours, Port Mosby cloudy periods and windy. Daru cloudy periods, windy with possible brief showers. Kerima and Popondeta a few showers. Alatau cloudy periods with chances of few showers. In the Mamase region, lay occasional rain showers. Medeng partly cloudy, we work partly cloudy with brief rain drizzle, vanim of few showers and drizzles and possible thunderstorm. In the New Guinea Islands region, Loringa a few showers and thunderstorm, Kavieng and Kimbe partly cloudy, Kokopo and Rabal partly cloudy as well. Buka a few showers and possible thunderstorm. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundiawa a few showers, Mendi and Wabeg few showers and rain drizzle. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama to Yul Island to Port Mosby to Hood Point to Samurai Islands seas 2 to 3.5 meters rising to 4 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Eastern and Western Milin Bay Islands to Cape Vogel seas 2 to 3 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogel to Yuan Gulf to Finchafen seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Inchafen through Vitis, Dempia Straits, to CSC and Long Island, to Medang and Kalkar Island, seas 2.5 to 3.5 meters, rising to 4 meters. Waters of west of Medang to Wiwek, to Banimo and Norton PNG Indonesian border, seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas 2 to 3 meters. Waters of East New Britain to New Island and Bougainville, seas 2 to 3 meters. Waters of West New Britain, seas 2.5 to 3.5 meters, rising to 4 meters. Looking at the ocean forecast, Coral Sea seas rough, southeast winds of 25 to 33 knots. Solomon Sea seas rough, southeast winds of 25 to 33 knots. Prismark Sea seas moderate to rough, becoming very rough over southern sector, with southeast winds of 20 to 33 knots, reaching 47 knots. And Pacific Ocean seas light to moderate, southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's how we end the bulletin for 27th of August 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.